So here's a question for you. Can we have Christianity without Christ? Now, before you go saying, Yerkes, you have been locked away too long in this quarantine thing. Well, yes, I have. I mean, just look at this hair. You can't get it cut anywhere. But that's not why I'm asking. I've noticed this trend recently in the Christian community. It's one in which they focus so intently upon their religion that they have kind of pushed Christ to the outer side of it. They're not real focused on him. And what do I mean by that? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. Here we go. Welcome to a simple, not shallow video. A video that is meant to help you steep in God's love, much like coffee steeps in a wonderful French press, until your faith is just like that very good cup of coffee. Simple, strong, full of flavor, and richly satisfying. So let the steeping begin. Now, as I've been looking around at, at, at different things, I'm finding that in the Christian community, there's a, a great dedication to teachings, to ideas, to doctrines, to activities, to styles of worship, well, to their religion. And indeed, what I have seen is folks doing religion very, very well. And yet, they're doing it so well that I think sometimes it's become a Christ-styled religion and has stopped it being Christian because they have shifted their focus off of Christ as its center. He has become merely part of the overall religion that they are practicing. So they're focused so much on what they know about Christ. You know, they, they have many things at their fingertips, tons of information, and they know it. They know their doctrines. They know their Bible. They just don't know Christ as well as they would if they stayed focused on him. Now, 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 please don't get me wrong. I'm not being critical of anybody, you know, and I'm not saying that they're wrong in any of their practices or any of their ideas or any of their doctrines. I'm saying that they get these right. They are Christian people. But there's the tragedy. To, to have the Bible and to study the Bible so much that you miss Christ. Well, it's sort of like the Pharisees in Jesus' day. I mean, these folks, ain't nobody ever studied religion any better than they. They studied the Bible day in and day out. They could quote chapter, they could quote verse, they could tell you why they're doing what they're doing, how it relates to the Bible, what you shouldn't do based on the Bible. They, they knew their Bible. And yet they missed out on God. You know, Jesus said he came to give abundant life. He didn't come to teach about it. He didn't come to teach us what to read in order to find it. He came to give it. We have to be focused on the one who's giving if we're going to actually receive it. An interesting story uh, comes to mind as I'm talking about this, and that's the story about the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. You know, Jesus had just been crucified and buried. Now, he had risen at this point, but as far as these two disciples knew, he'd just been, he'd just been buried, and it was over. They were so dejected. I mean, they thought here was the Messiah. They had placed all their hopes in Jesus. They had placed all their hopes for the future, everything. They were all in, and it was all over. And they were walking home talking about it when suddenly this man shows up and asks them what's going on. And they say, well, haven't you heard? Jesus is dead. Well, Jesus said, okay. And as they were going along, he started talking to them about the Bible and the scriptures. And he started to explain the scriptures to them. He started to show everything that the scriptures said about Jesus. He was showing them who he was, for it was Jesus. Now, when he left them, they said, didn't our hearts burn while he was sharing the scriptures and expounding and opening up the Bible to us? It was amazing. See, when Jesus became their focus in reading the scriptures, 
all of a sudden they recognized Jesus. And all of a sudden he came to life because he was their focus. You know, we're told, you know, seek first the king. Seek first the kingdom of God. You seek the king, you are seeking the kingdom, and everything else will be added to you. So if you keep focused on Jesus and the king, you will get teachings. You will get doctrine. He'll make sure you get those things. They will be added to you as long as you stay focused on him first, because he is where the life is. Back to our coffee metaphor. See, I find those who only want to focus on the things they're doing, focus on what they know and not to focus on Christ, to be like those who know that there is something called French pressed coffee and they know of the wonders of it and how people tell them that there's so much flavor and richness there, but rather than taking the steps they need to develop their palate so that they can unleash that freedom of richness and satisfaction in their own life. Well, they prefer to satisfy themselves and stay content with a little bit of drip coffee and a whole lot of cream and sugar. See, they prefer to sweeten their coffee to their own personal tastes. And tragically, I find sometimes that means that they don't get to taste the coffee at all. Well, until next time, love simply, love wisely, and love well. And take the time to get to know Christ, to focus on Christ and Christ alone so that he can develop your palate and set you free to enjoy the life, to enjoy the French press type of faith, one that is full, rich, and satisfying. For it is in Christ and Christ alone that this abundance is to be found. So tell me what you think in the comment section below. And if you like this video, share it with a friend. And click the like and the subscribe button. That sure is helpful if you do. And make sure to grab that gray notification bell to make sure YouTube lets you know whenever a new video is posted. Thank you very, very much for listening. And I'll catch you next time.